follow. During the next 10 minutes, we will discuss the most important business events taking place from April 18 to 22. This is events around the corner on Kazakh TV. On April 18, two new subway stations will open in Almaty. Rosir Koznadzor will begin audit of food suppliers in Greece, Hungary and Cyprus on the 20th. The European Commission for Competition will investigate the sale of the Greek gas-operated DESFA. Let's discuss this news in details. New subway stations will open in Almaty on April 18, as stated by Deputy Akim of the city, Yuri Ilyin, at a conference for regulation and management of public transport. The three-year-old Almaty subway will commission two stations named Moscow and Sairan. Currently, the length of the subway is more than 8.5 kilometers. When the stations are opened, it will become almost 3 kilometers longer. Experts say that the passenger flow will double as a result of commissioning the Moscow and Sairan stations, which are located in the sleeping quarters of the city. During a short period, this environmentally friendly means of transportation has gained popularity among city residents. Initially, the subway carried 13 to 14,000 passengers per day. Today the figure comes to 25,000. At the end of last year, the subway reached its 20 million passenger. The new stations have passed required tests. An additional train will be commissioned to maintain the existing timetable. The deputy Akim of Almaty said that in the future the subway is supposed to become the foundation for the transport infrastructure and will influence other types of public transport and their traffic patterns. It is planned to commission another two lines to connect the northern and southern parts of the city. Let me remind you that the other two stations are expected to open in 2018. Experts say that the Almaty subway is the most up-to-date one in the CS countries in terms of technical condition. On April 19, parliamentary elections will take place in Finland. It is Kunta, the Finnish unicameral parliament, is based in Helsinki and comprises 200 deputies. Elections are held every four years. The don't method is used for Monday distribution. This method was proposed by Belgian mathematician Victor Don't. This proportional representation system aims to allocate seats to parties in proportion to the number of votes received if candidates pass the established person threshold. Therefore, representation in the parliament depends on the popularity of political parties among voters. In addition, the method gives minorities a chance to be represented in the Supreme State body. The Finnish parliament elects the government, that is, the Council of State, which comprises the Prime Minister and 17 ministers. The parliament also takes decisions on the state budget and signs international treaties. Deputies are entitled to submit draft laws for consideration as individuals or on behalf of a party. According to polls, today there is no unconditional leader in Finland among politicians political parties. However, the question of keeping the existing coalition government led by Alexander Staub remains open. Finnish political scientists believe that the centrist party has good chances of winning in the elections. The Finns party, led by Timo Soini, known for their Euroscepticism, has recently lost its positions and will probably get not more than 13 to 14 percent of the votes. Most likely the coming elections will change the coalition's configuration, but will harm lead to serious political changes in the country. However, the country's position on the NATO membership may change. Finnish President Sauli Niinistö was quoted as saying in an interview to the Swedish newspaper Dagen Snyheter. Niinistö noted that two-thirds of parliamentarians have to vote for joining the NATO in order for the application to be submitted. At the same time, mere 26 percent of Finns support accession to NATO versus 43 percent who oppose it. On Monday, April 20, Rosel Koznadzor, the Russian agricultural watchdog, will start the audit of food product suppliers in Greece, Hungary and Cyprus. According to Rosel Koznadzor representatives, the goal is to ensure immediate exports from these countries to Russia after the sanctions are lifted. We will carry out the inspection of food suppliers in the three countries which are interested in exporting food to Russia from April 20 to April 30. We are in touch 
with veterinary authorities in these countries to ensure safety of the products coming to our market, head of Rosalkoznadzor's press service Alexei Alexeyenko said, around 20 agricultural producers will be under inspection in each country. The Commission will start working in Greece and continue the inspection in neighboring Cyprus. Hungary will be inspected simultaneously or after the audit is over in the first two countries. Germany, France, Poland and other European countries have expressed their willingness to undergo the audit by Rosalkoznadzor as well. However, no specific agreements have been reached with these countries. Let me remind you that the Russian embargo will remain active until August 8 this year. Under the sanctions, the Russian government banned key food imports from the European Union, Canada, USA, Norway and Australia. On April 21, Google will change its search algorithms, placing an emphasis on mobile friendliness of websites as the key criteria for search rankings. The new algorithm will affect search engines in all languages worldwide. It will be fully introduced within a week. From the date, Google will show the smartphone-friendly search results first. The websites that lack mobile versions will not be included in the top ranking. Western media have questioned the innovation as mobile get done, as it is expected to significantly change the search results. This is just a minor update, but it covers the whole world. It is not done for Kazakhstan only. Therefore, taking account of Kazakhstan's internet penetration, which is definitely lagging behind large countries with developed internet technology, e-sales and e-commerce, it will not affect us as much as them. Because we do not have many stakeholders in each category, such as sale of electronics or gadgets, all the major players are listed on the first search page. It will be the question who is listed above who in the ranking. This will be important. As to the other categories which make up the majority, there is not huge competition going on there, so there will be no bad impact for the local owners of Internet resources. The new mobile-friendly algorithm doesn't provide for any scale of usability. A website is either mobile-friendly or not. Mobile-friendliness will be defined by many factors related to the usability of a website. Google expects the innovation to significantly influence the mobile search worldwide and help users get high-quality search results. The company recommends webmasters to pass a mobile-friendliness test and also study which websites Google accepts as mobile-friendly. The research shows that around 60% of all search queries originate from mobile devices, so this update by Google looks very logical. The deal for the sale of the majority stake in DESFA, the Greek gas system operator, will be reviewed on April 22. Azerbaijan's state oil company Sokar plans to acquire 31% of shares from the Greek government and 35% from Hellenic Petroleum. In July 2013, the Greek Fund for State Property Management gave the green light to the deal. In December the same year, Sokar signed an agreement on sale with the fund and Hellenic Petroleum. Earlier, the deadline for the review was March 23, but the European Commission for Competition doubted the legality of the deal and suspended the procedure. Analysts believe this is due to the European officials fearing a possible decline in competition in the Greek gas industry. The acquisition of DESFA would help Azerbaijan create a gas center in Greece. This is important for the implementation of the TANAP gas pipeline project that competes against Gazprom South Stream.
Sokar is the only producer of oil products in Azerbaijan. The company owns two refineries as well as networks of gas stations in Azerbaijan, Georgia, Romania and Switzerland. Sokar is the co-owner of Petkim, the Turkish largest petrochemical complex. This has been our perspective on the coming few days. You've watched events around the corner. See you next time on Kazakh TV.